This case takes place in the United States of America on the 19th of March 2013. Dylan Schumacher was a 16 year old from Buffalo, New York. He had a 19 year old girlfriend named Ashley Smith who was a mother of two boys named Austin and Christopher. At the time, Austin was almost two and Christopher was two months. Both Dylan and Ashley believed that Christopher was Dylan's son. However, they would later find out that this wasn't the case. From what I can gather, the two had a very off and on relationship. They would frequently argue and break up on occasion. At around the age of 15, Dylan is reported to have been ordered by a family court judge to be sent to a rehab center due to him taking illegal substances. It is also mentioned in court documents that he'd been prescribed a medication for ADHD and anger problems, but he had chosen to stop taking it in February of 2013. In early 2013, Ashley Smith had been living with her father and stepmother with her two sons, but she was kicked out of the house when her father and stepmother discovered an unused condom in her bed. After she was kicked out, Dylan asked his mother if Ashley and the two boys could move in and stay with them. Believing that Christopher was her grandson, she allowed this to happen. It was in February of 2013 that she came to live with Dylan and his mother. Ashley had a job at a pizza restaurant not too far from where she was now living. While she was working, Dylan would look after Christopher and Austin would go and stay with his biological father. But on occasion, Dylan would look after both boys. On the 18th of March 2013, Dylan and Ashley got into an argument. It quickly turned sour and resulted in Ashley threatening to call the police after Dylan locked himself in the bathroom with Christopher. Dylan then opened the door and told her that if she was ever to call the police on him, he would accuse her of statutory rape. Ashley hit Dylan with a pillow and he threw her across the bed into Christopher's toys and yelled at her to leave the house. At some point after this, Dylan spoke with a neighbor. During this conversation, he told them that he didn't like Ashley's son, Austin, because Ashley gave him whatever he wanted. And now we arrive to the 19th of March. As Dylan was getting ready for school, he and Ashley were talking. He told her that he wanted her out of the house by the end of the week. Dylan then went to school, whilst Ashley stayed at home and looked after Austin and Christopher. When Dylan got back, Ashley got ready for work, whilst he looked after the two boys. Now, according to Dylan, this is what happened. As Ashley left for work, Austin was sleeping. When he woke up, he began walking around and ended up falling down some steps and banging his face. This resulted in a mouth injury. Dylan helped him up, cleaned up some blood from his mouth and got him a glass of milk. He then sent a message to Ashley telling her about the fall. Dylan claims that he popped on some cartoons for Austin to watch, whilst he sat on his phone and attempted to sell illegal substances to his friends and was messaging other teenagers attempting to hook up. At some point, Dylan made some food for Austin, but due to the injuries to his mouth, Austin spat out the food and according to Dylan, Austin began to swear at him. So, Dylan slapped him in the face with the back of his hand and made Austin eat the food. Later on, Dylan changed Austin's nappy, but Austin was being a little stubborn, which of course is totally normal for someone of that age. Dylan responded by slamming him down on the wooden floor to get the nappy on him, resulting in Austin banging his head. Dylan claims that at some point during the night, for reasons he can't explain, he began hitting Austin. He placed a pillow over his face and began to punch him in the head through the pillow a number of times. After this, Dylan claims that Austin was sleepy, so he shook him any time he would nod off so he would stay awake until his bedtime. Dylan claimed that after putting Austin to bed, he seemed fine. However, he said he came back to check on him five minutes later and realized that Austin was breathing in a strange way. Upon closer inspection, he said his eyes were half open, he was sweaty and was bleeding from his lip. He then realized that Austin was totally unresponsive. Upon seeing Austin in this condition, Dylan shouted for his mother, who was home at the time. The two then called 911 at around 8.20 p.m. They also called Ashley and told her to come home as soon as possible. Before the emergency services arrived, he told his mother that he had hurt Austin because he was frustrated. 
The police soon arrived at the scene. They found Austin in the upstairs bedroom lying on his bed. He was bleeding from his mouth and had two large bruises on both sides of his face. His pupils were dilated and he did not appear to have a pulse. An officer who was there at the time overheard Dylan talking to his mother about what had happened. He said, Oh my god, she's going to kill me. I can't believe I did this. And, Oh my god, I didn't mean for this to happen. An officer gave Austin CPR until an ambulance arrived, at which time he wrapped him up in a blanket, carried him downstairs and placed him into the ambulance. Meanwhile, the police asked Dylan what had happened. He lied and said that Austin had just fallen down the stairs and seemed fine afterwards, claiming that it was only after going to bed that these problems came to light. Dylan was placed into a police car and taken to the station for further questioning. Ashley managed to return just as Austin was being placed into the back of the ambulance, but the EMTs would not allow her to ride with him to the hospital. Ashley grabbed some belongings and went to the hospital, but when she arrived, the doctors told her the devastating news that Austin had passed away. Meanwhile, Dylan was at the station. As he was brought into the questioning room, he was informed that Austin had passed away. During the interrogation, Dylan tried to tell them that Austin had just simply fallen down the stairs and became ill. Detectives told him that they didn't find this story to be believable. Dylan then gave another story, telling them that he did hurt Austin due to him becoming frustrated, though he played down the truth to some extent. Detectives again told him that they didn't find his story to be convincing, and informed him that an autopsy would soon be conducted and they would soon know the truth. After hearing this, Dylan confessed. He described shaking, slapping, slamming, and punching Austin. Following this, Dylan was arrested. An autopsy was conducted on Austin's body. His head and neck injuries were consistent with having been struck numerous times in the face, head, and neck. It was clear that he had been shaken, and his head had been pushed or slammed into the ground. The cause of Austin's death was blunt force trauma to the head, resulting in diffuse axonal injury. This is the tearing of the brain's long connecting nerve fibers that happens when the brain is injured as it shifts and rotates inside the bony skull. The findings were inconsistent with accidental trauma. A DNA test was also conducted, which showed that Dylan was not Christopher's father. The trial would begin later into 2013, Dylan and his defense tried to push for the most lenient sentence, which would be 15 years to life. The defense was that he was inexperienced with children and had issues controlling his anger. Dylan cried and told the jury that he did not mean to kill Austin and that he didn't even believe that he had the strength to kill anyone. He painted himself as a sorry individual and tried to portray that he had deep regret for what had happened. He admitted that there was some intent in what he did, but that he couldn't remember exactly what happened. He claimed that he had limited experience with children and that he had been angry and just wanted to discipline Austin, but did not know how. He also told the court that he did place the pillow over Austin's head, claiming that he thought it would provide some protection from his punches. During the trial, it also came out that Dylan had said something truly disgusting on the phone to his mother whilst he was in jail. He told his mother he was a 16-year-old blonde and that all he had to do is cry in front of the jury and they're going to feel sorry for him. The calls were monitored, recorded, and given to the court. I would give my life for Austin. I loved him a lot. A young convicted killer cries in court before learning his fate for the violent murder of his girlfriend's son. I didn't mean to kill Austin. Ashley, I really didn't. I really think I did it. I didn't mean to hurt him. Dylan Shoemaker walked into a state Supreme Court room pleading his case, telling his victim's mother and the court he's remorseful for what he did. The record will show that you admitted on that on July 23rd, 2013, in a phone call to your mother from the holding center, you stated, and I got a quote from the court reporter, I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me. Evidence was also presented to the jury, highlighting the horrific extent of Austin's injuries. 
On the 9th of December 2013, the jury found Dylan guilty of second-degree murder. The sentencing was held on the 10th of January 2014. The State Supreme Court Justice M. William Bowler called him a manipulator and a deceiver, shaming him for his plan to cry in front of the jury to garner sympathy. Dylan was given the harshest possible sentence, 25 years to life. The case of Austin Smith is truly horrific, and it's these kinds of cases that are always hard to write about. Someone who commits such a crime deserves to be punished to the fullest extent of the law. But in February of 2016, the Court of Appeals reduced Dylan's sentence to 18 years to life, citing that the sentence handed to him was too harsh. This means that he is eligible for parole in 2031. He will, however, remain under the state supervision even after being released. <laughs>